Swole Benji here. Today I'm going to teach you how healers can easily solo either very large groups of dangerous mobs or a single highly dangerous mob all by themselves very quickly, very efficiently with a high DPS, high survival rate in light armor. You don't even need heavy armor. So let me just show you a massive boar pull and then I will talk about what I'm doing, how I did it, and how you can do it too. The gear that you may need, the gear that you'll want, the talent points, the weapon masteries that you'll pick, and all of that fun stuff. But first, we're just going to massacre all the boars in the camp here, or as many as we can. And uh, you can see that they're kind of beating me up a bit, and that's fine, because I'm just going to switch to this and look at my health bar. It's never going to go down from here. It is it is over for the pigs. They are done. Look at my health. It doesn't matter. I can take every hit, and it, I just get back, right back to full health. There is nothing they can do, except that I got stuck into a box here, and so they reset. Which is unfortunate, um, but we're just going to go ahead and finish off the remaining boars. And you can see that they do tons and tons of damage to me, right? But as soon as I pull out the Void Blade, it's over for them. <laughs> because I'm just going to begin healing like crazy, especially with this aura around me. And you don't even have to have a lot of boars. I'm not even using my F spell, okay? Uh, and there's no need. But if this was like a single really tough hard monster... I would use a certain ability so that I can have even more life stealing and more survivability. And I'm going to talk about that just as soon as I skin these boars real quick. And then we will get to the gear, equipment, what you're going to want to use, the talent points, etc. It's all going to be right here in this video. So just stay tuned. Uh, look at all those rares. <laughs> Bright scale hide, very good stuff. Worth over 100 on my server. If you haven't already, you should come here to Boar's Home and get your farm on. Oh, is there one more? Nope. Look at that. I got I got like 20 something in that run. That's 200 200 gold easy. All right, so let's talk about the gear. Now, there's a few ways to gear this character, okay? But this is primarily a healer first and then a DPS second. <clears throat> so what you're going to want to do is get yourself the faction life staff. The reason why is it has blessed, that's for bonus healing and it has refreshing moves. So every time you light attack, you will get your cooldowns back. Then you're going to craft a full set of light armor with only focus as your stat and then refreshing. Get that on all the armor that you can. I was able to get a full set in 55 crafts. It doesn't matter what other mods are on there. Anything else that you can use is a bonus. Otherwise, like penetrating rapid shot, who cares, right? Uh, as far as jewelry goes, try to get an amulet with all focus, of course, and regeneration. Uh, for rings, leeching helps and keen awareness helps greatly. And try to get as much focus as you can on that ring. Uh, this is for solo play, for group play. Just get as much focus as you can. Uh, and then for your earring, get focus and um, whatever else you want. I, I like refreshing on my stuff. It's like I'm using a budget set. You can see my gear score is only 521. Most people are running around in like 570, 580 by now. So I'm way behind the curve, okay? So that's it pretty much for the gear. So let's talk about the specs. We're going to talk about life step, and then I'm going to tell you the, the rotations, the combat abilities, all that fun stuff. So, you can go, this is mainly for wars, open world PvP, and solo farming, okay? Uh, for dungeons, you can also use this if you have a good tank. If your tank sucks, you will have to use things like Lights Embrace, Splash of Light to keep his stamina up, and if your entire group is just a bunch of uh, zoom, zoom, zug, zugs that run into enemy cleaves, and you might want to pick up Divine Embrace instead for the kind of chain heal. But anyway, the reason why you want this is this will maximize your area of effect healing and light staff or life staff by itself. And remember, I put all my points into focus. I didn't put any points anywhere else. You want as much focus as possible. You're a complete glass cannon. All right, so you're like, look, look at the damage. I do a light attack for nearly 900. Uh, you can light attack into beacon, you can light attack into orb of protection, which uh, I kind of said that in reverse there. Uh, as an animation cancel, you can, so you can kind of shoot twice, it looks like this, like bam bam, right? Uh, so the reason why you want those two abilities is they are just very quick AoEs. Sacred Ground is an incredibly powerful ability, you can stand in this thing and all those boars would never be able to kill me as long as this spell is active. Now, one of the reasons why you want Orb of Protection is because it applies a 10% Fortify on you, okay? Which still stays on you for quite a while after you've swapped weapons. Now, when you have uh, the Void Gauntlet here, so I'm going to show you the Void Gauntlet abilities real quick too. 
before I show you how it works. And you're going to use this exact tree. You can pause the video, you can take a screenshot, however, whatever you want to do. You're not going to take all of the abilities in Orb of Decay. Orb of Decay is your heal. This is a damage ability first and then a heal second. And when it hits you, it's a heal over time. This is great for dungeons with groups. You noticed in the boar fight that I had, it was continuously up constantly. So I was able to spam this ability and hit all the boars with it over and over and over again. All right. And the reason why you don't take the last two abilities, you don't need to slow anyone. It, this, this sucks in PvP. The, uh, this slow, by the time you cast it and hit them with it, it, it does nothing, okay? And then detonating orb, this actually works against you if you are a high actions per minute gamer. Because I like to mash my abilities because they don't always go off due to latency and input delay. So if I'm sitting here, like, my ability is R. So if I mash R, it will just blow that orb up. I will never get the heal. And if you try to time the heal, then sometimes you'll miss yourself due to server lag. And you won't get the heal over time effect. Which, uh, so it's better just not to spend those two points in anything, okay? Essence Rupture, which is what I did not use on the boars, looks something like this, okay? You put this on the enemy, they have this three lightning bolt icon, and all the attacks that you do on them are going to heal you for 20%, but when this debuff runs out on the enemy, it does a circle of healing around you, and the cool thing is, is when I pulled all those boars, I could have casted this like six or seven times. And that would be six or seven circular healings. And if you're fighting like a really big tough mob uh, that's going to take a while to like chew up like an elite mob or something, then using that ability will constantly AoE heal around it. So you will be healed. You'll be healed every time you strike it. it you'll get stamina back every time you strike it. It is the best ability for not only AoE mob farming, but also for farming very tough mobs. And in dungeons, you cast this on the boss, your entire party is healing themselves. It's great, okay? Um, so those are your two heal abilities, and then of course your offense ability is Void Blade. I don't know why the way the wording on this is, it's actually more than 100% weapon damage, because if you hit them with your ranged attack, it does less damage than if you hit them with just a light Void attack. Now, another thing too is that by uh, having refreshing move on your weapon, so I'm also using this for solo play. I am using this because it has keen and refreshing move. If you can get one of these with all focus that has keen and refreshing move, go for it. For healing dungeons, just make sure that you have as much focus as possible uh, because you won't be meleeing too much when you're in a dungeon group as the healer role. All right. And then these are the talents that I pick up. And of course, Void Caller, that is the area of effect um, that circles around you when you do st six ability stacks. And the cool thing is, is that every single swing of your Void Blade counts as an ability. So I'm going to let this pig hit me here. And wow, the graphics are glitching. Okay, see, if you look at the bottom middle, I have four stacks, five stacks, and then six stacks. See the circle? This circle will heal me over time consistently and deal damage to all enemies around me over time. It is very powerful and it will keep you alive and all of these things stack like crazy oh wow that's the first thing someone said in chat for hours <laughs> we'll suckle for sand flux i happen to have four thousand sand flux right now so um no, I, no, I, don't, I don't need i don't need a suckle <laughs> i've never even seen this person's name before anyway back to the tutorial um so the way that you want to mass pull mobs or to fight one really hard mob is what you're going to do is you're going to use your life staff and you're going to cast Aura of Protection on the ground. Now, with this ability Aegis, that allows your Aura of Protection to become an area of effect, and that will give you a heal over time and 10% fortify. Then you're going to switch to your Void Gauntlet, and then you're going to tag him with your spells. So you're going to hit him with this. This will give you a heal over time. You're, you're going to hit him with the other ability, which is called essence rupture and that's going to allow all attacks against them to deal 20 or heal you for 20 percent life leech you're going to activate activate your void blade and you're just going to start swinging and as you swing you will get your cooldowns back and you just spam your abilities as they are off cooldown now you got to watch your little buff timer you see that little sword icon with two seconds remaining when that runs out simply recast your void blade it will be up if you are swinging on an enemy because you will be getting your cooldowns back now, when your Fortify runs out, just simply cast another um, Orb of Protection at your feet. If you start getting into trouble, 
you can cast Beacon. And let me show you something about Beacon. I'm just going to hurt myself here a bit. For Beacon, you don't have to stand in the Beacon. Just, just run through this circle once, and it will continuously heal you for the duration of the circle. I'm not in the circle, and I'm still receiving the healing from it. See? So you don't have to stand in this circle. The only circle that you actually have to stand in, and I want to show you just the, how powerful uh, this spell is. It's called Sacred Ground. Pretty sure it's called Sacred Ground. I just want to make sure. Uh, sacred ground, yes, okay. So you stand, this one you have to stand in, and it will heal you consistently, right? Now there's a little bit more to healing than just casting the spell, which, um, let me just uh, demonstrate here. So, as a life staff user, you have a few passives. When you dodge, you will receive, you will be able to deal more healing out, right? And you have a buff, which anything is a buff in this game, okay? This is two buffs. Dodging gives you that buff, that's a buff, all of those count as buffs. So you might as well just count this one as always on, okay? Uh, the next one down here is Intensify. When you hit with a heavy attack, you'll gain a stacking 10% healing bonus buff. So, and this lasts for quite a while. And you'll see here, I have that little health icon with an X3 next to it, it's this one right here. And that boar's gonna hurt me. So I have that on the boar, I do a dodge roll, hit the Q, hit the R, cast the F on myself, and look at all this. I can't even hurt myself, I heal too much. <laughs> uh, but you can expect this to heal for a very high amount. I, I'm actually curious just how much it will heal. So let me just demonstrate the power of how much we got here. Just find a boar, and we're just gonna slap him with three of these. That's two, that's three. We're gonna dodge, hit up our feet here, cast this, 852 a second. Uh, it's over, and then you switch to this while you're meleeing. All of those are heals, all of those are life leeching. This is a heal over time. When that circle pops up around you, that's a heal over time. You just have so much healing that nothing will ever kill you unless it one-shots you and that's the power and the secret and what this build is all about and i shouldn't have skinned that because now i'm overweight um so i gotta throw some throw some sticks out there we go uh, not enough uh, i gotta throw something else out real quick let's just throw 10 10 of those not enough throw another i know you can you can kind of see it on the bar but i'm just gonna do it this way and throw another 10 out that's fine all right so now we're safe and we can run away but Essentially, that is the build, that's the guide, that's how you play it. In group dungeons, You every time you left-click an ally, you heal them for 16% weapon damage, uh, which, uh, when you do a dodge roll and you have your heavy attacks built up, is going to be about f 700 or so. So, you can use this to quickly top off someone. You can also weave in the orb of protections, the, uh, the beacon, you can cast sacred ground on your tank. Usually this goes on your tank, not always, but... Now here's the thing, let's say, let's talk about mana before I wrap up the video. Okay, so the thing with Void Gauntlet, you just hold right click, you get your mana back, okay? I'm gonna spam every spell I have and blow as much mana as possible, and I want I want to show you something too. When you have the Void Gauntlet out, and you're, you're at full mana like I am right now, you do a dodge roll, look how much I heal. Boom. <laughs> I almost fully healed from one dodge roll, and I can do that... What, every 20 seconds? I believe it's 20 seconds. It's uh, the passive right down here. Yes, you will heal 80% weapon damage every 20 seconds. So let's just show that off one more time. Unfortunately, you cannot stack all the healing passes from Life Staff because when you switch over to the Void Gauntlet, they disappear. So I'm at 4,000 HP. I'm going to do a dodge roll, and now I'm at... <laughs> 5,900 HP uh, from one dodge roll, okay? And like I said, every 20 seconds. Also, with the life staff, you have a passive that when you take damage once every two minutes, uh, you will heal for quite a bit. And I know it doesn't look like a lot on the tooltip, but it's it's like three to 6,000 depending on how much your healing is buffed up. All right, so that those are just some more passive ways to heal and stay alive. But let's just spam all of our spells here. So our mana is just dropping like crazy, right? Look at that. Our mana is basically gone. It's in the red, okay? So I'm just going to hold right... Uh, I'm going to turn off Void Blade, and then I'm going to hold right click and look at my mana. And there we go. We're fully healed. So that did take some health, but you just heal yourself right back up. You can just throw one of these out. You can heal that up. Uh, I can do that dodge roll heal up. There's so many ways for you. You will never run out of mana with this build because that is how it is designed. Now, another last tip, too, is that when using the Void Gauntlet, instead of holding right-click like this, let me just throw some heals out on myself. Tap right-click and tap your weapon sheath button, and you will absorb yourself much quicker, and you will get mana 
just slightly faster, and it's not that hard. It's the same thing that you practice kind of when you do the dodge roll cancels, which I kind of I messed up and double rolled, but you roll and sheath your weapon, and you won't stop. Whereas if you roll normally, you have that little pause at the end of your roll. You see that pause there? But when I weapon sheath and unsheath upon the end of the roll, or just spam it, like, I'm just spamming. I don't have to... I, I just hit roll, and I don't stop moving forward. It's the same concept with using the Void Gauntlet to regenerate your mana. And there we go. And <laughs> you basically, you have mana forever. And if you're in a fight, like, if you're fighting the boars, you'll notice I don't even have food buffs up. Okay. I'm going to show you one more time now. I got Fortify on. I'm going to aggro as many boars as I can. And I'm just going to roll around. Couldn't roll past that boar, so I'm gonna take a hit. That's fine. Uh, let's throw another beacon on. Hit this one. Come over here. I'm gonna throw. No, I'm gonna. That's a beacon. I'm sorry. Orb of protection is what I meant to say. Last orb of protection. I'm gonna switch the void gauntlet. Press R. Press Q. Start swinging. Press F. Press R every time it's up. Look at my cooldowns. They just come right back up. I can just spam this and look at my health bar. It just. It doesn't go anywhere. It just stays. I'm looking at my my buff bar, looking at my sword. It runs out right now, but all the mobs are dead. Um, so another thing too, uh, just to note, I can't skin those because I'm full of weight. Um, when you have void uh, your void gauntlet out and you can swing, don't do the roll animation cancel I talked about because that will end the spell. Okay, that will cancel your void gauntlet and it turns it back into a ranged attack. Uh, also, if you switch weapons and then switch back, that also disables your void blade spell. So once you cast Void Blade, you're kind of lo you're not locked in, but you, you gotta you gotta be mindful. If you want to swing for the next 15 seconds, don't switch weapons unless you absolutely need to. If you hit the enemy a few times, you'll get all your cooldowns back anyway. But if you are in danger, switch to your life staff, cast some self heals. Um, and by the way, I you'll, you'll notice that my icon was over here when I was casting that spell, but then it, it casted down here. How did I do that? I have my Alt key bound to my self cast. To cast on me, as in self-cast, as in, yeah, you get the idea. I'm just in an OCD loop at this point. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically it for this build. This build will let you solo elite mobs in Shattered Mountain if you want to, just one at a time. Don't try to AoE them. If you want to AoE down 20 elite mobs at a time, I have a video about that on my channel. Go check it out. Check out the playlist. I make a video almost every day. I'm Soul Bidgey. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. I will see you tomorrow. There is one more Void Gauntlet build I want to show you, but I don't have the gear for it yet. And the way that one works is, is, is it is a glass... It's a glass cannon all-intelligence build. Be on the lookout, because it's going to take me a while to make this one. It's full intelligence, okay? Full intelligence, light armor, and what it does is it uses this spell here, Petrifying Scream, to hold a player in place while Oblivion hurts them, and then your choice of while Ice Storm hurts them, and then before they get freed, they get stuck in the Ice Shower for double damage, or if they ever buff Fire Staff because they'll be stuck in place, you can use Fireball's damage over time, and you could either Flamethrower them, <laughs> Uh, you could pillar of fire them because they can't move. They'll be rooted, and it's an instant one-frame spell. I, I can't show it off without respecking in this video for Petrifying Scream. But what you do is you basically just pretend this is Petrifying Scream. You root them in place, you swap weapons, and then you just burn them with pillar of fire. And that's going to deal at maximum with, with all the right gear. Your pillar of fire will crit for 9,000 damage. On a heavy target. So yes, it, it hits that freaking hard when you have 490 intelligence, which I don't have the gear for that right now. But if I did, I would show it off. It's in the future. It's in the works, guys. Take care. I will see you tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this build. This has been Healers Can Solo very easy with this build. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.